everybody, and welcome to another episode of Small Business Stories powered by Finley. This week, we're going to t- be talking about some ways to raise your prices without upsetting your customers. I have Jonathan here with me today. Jonathan, would you tell us a little bit about yourself? Hey, everyone. Thanks for the intro, Angie. Um, Yes, I started my career as a consultant helping small businesses in a variety of of ways, Um, sometimes increasing revenue, um, sometimes cutting expenses. Um, And I've worked in small businesses and startups um, my whole career. Um, And now I'm at Finley and um, I landed here because I saw the enormous need to help small businesses with um, payment solutions. So here I am. It's a pleasure to have you with us today. And let's dive right in. From your years of working with small businesses, when have you noticed is a good time to raise prices? And what would you say to small business owners who are hesitant about raising their prices because of things like longstanding relationships with their customers? Yeah, it's a great question. There, there is no silver bullet for it. Um, either. Um, It's just typically um, small businesses wait longer to raise their prices than big businesses because it can be difficult. It can be difficult to know the right time. Um, It can be difficult because you have personal relationships with your customers. So it does help to ask this question. I I always recommend asking yourself this question um, at least once a year. And, And that is one of the First questions, um, if you haven't increased your prices in over a year, it's a great time to look and see uh, if now is the right time. Um, One other uh, question to ask is, do you have more work than you can handle? Um, Raising prices is a great way to make sure you're getting compensated for your time. Uh, So if you find yourself overwhelmed with too many customers, uh, especially if you're doing a business that's really intensive on your time. Um, You may want to look at raising prices. Um, This can help make sure your customers that value you most are getting to you. And it can also help you hire help if needed. Um, You also definitely want to look at your, your, what you call um, price inputs, meaning what you're paying for for things, for for costs of of the goods that you sell um, or the services you sell. If your rent's going up, if your cost of labor's going up, um, if, if any of those expenses are going up, it's a good time to look and make sure you're leaving yourself enough profit to um, sustain yourself. And then, of course, a, a great bellwether is looking at what your competitors charge. If you find that they're charging a lot more than you um, or charging for services differently, it's always good to check and ask yourself, um, the reason why. And one of those reasons may be that they've raised their prices as time went on and you haven't. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. So once a small business owner has decided to raise their prices, what's one of the more obvious ways to do it? It's a great question. There's there's a lot of different ways to do it. Um, And I think hopefully we'll talk about the the people side of it um, in a bit. But in terms of strategies on how to position your products, one way is to sell in bundles. Um, it can be just as important to have um, cash flow uh, than it is to have you know, the highest price you can charge for something. So selling in bundles can be really beneficial for you. You get the money up front, you get the um, validation or um, basically the the agreement that someone's going to do multiple um, classes or services, whatever business you're in. So selling in bundles can be really good for you and the customer. Give them a lower cost per class and give you that revenue, that cash up front. Right. It's always good to get paid up front so you have more of a safety net for the future or more of an opportunity, opportunity to invest back into your business to supercharge growth. Do you have any tips for those who are looking not only to placate, but to delight their customers while raising prices? Well, you can always add in bonuses. Um, You can add in extra feature, uh, extra services. Um, It really depends what business you're in. Um, But 
there, there's a there's a uh, value to having reciprocity, right? So if you're increasing your your prices, if you can give something back, um, even if it's just a token, it can mean a lot um, and can help soften that conversation. So um, I've seen everything from uh, something a little more meaningful, like if they're you're raising prices, they're, you're giving away a swag like t-shirt or a hat or something like that, to something very simple like extending the time a little bit. So if prices are going up significantly, for instance, you can change it from like a 45 minute to a 60 minute class. Right. It's always nice to get something that you didn't expect. And speaking of things that people don't expect, what can a small business owner do to make the change in pricing a little less jarring? Yeah, I mean, this is this is hard to do in practice, but really important, which is just continually raising your prices gradually. It's It can be a lot less painful than doing a big jump after a long time at a, a grandfathered or historical price. So especially if your customers expect it, if you've set expectations up front, if you're increasing your prices every year or thereabouts, it becomes an expected thing just at cost of doing business, which a lot of people frankly are used to with um, bigger, you know, working with bigger organizations. So raising your price gradually is, is a really good discipline to have. Right. Setting expectations early is so important. Sometimes just knowing what to expect can soften the blow of a price change. Um, what would you say is the easiest way to increase prices without having to put in like the effort of like adding in a bonus or like bundling up your services? Um, well, this goes to the people side, um, which is really being transparent and open with your customers. Again, you're a small business. Part of what you're doing is interacting with your community and most customers are gonna value that and they're gonna understand. So just being transparent on the why sometimes can be enough and, and the why can be any reason, right? Um, it's just about having that open communication. Mm -hmm. Customers are people too. They see that things are getting more expensive everywhere and your small business needs to keep up to survive. Um, so what would you say is the most like substantial and impactful way to increase prices? Well, one of the things that's most um, best paired with is offering um, subscription payments. Um, again, it's it's all about understanding your cash flow. So if you look at a broader um, if you look at a broader perspective, um, increasing prices is necessary as your expenses go up and as the market changes and as demand for your services goes up. But it's also really important to have that um, reliable cash flow. So you can juggle those and balance those together. Um, what a lot of our customers do, is when they do increase prices, they um, offer if people go on to a subscription plan or a prepayment plan to be able to be grandfathered into old rates. And this is a totally known and accepted practice across industries. So um, it's something that your customers will really understand. And it's really a win-win. It's, um, you know, I have to raise my prices to be able to, um, keep up with my business. But if you're willing to commit ahead of time or you're willing to go on to an auto payment plan, I can keep you at uh, the existing rate. And I would just um, caution you, you can make that open-ended, but you also may wanna put um, some sort of condition on there, like you can stay at the given rates for the next year. Um, just so if you have to have that conversation next year again, and you're not gonna offer this particular grandfathered in rate that you set expectations early. Mm -hmm. There is a reason we see subscription-based services everywhere. They're profitable and small businesses should take like advantage of that pricing model as well. That's all the time we have today. Thank you, Jonathan, for your time and your expertise. Thank you, Angie, had a lot of fun. Before we head out, if you like today's tips, be sure to follow us on our social media. You can find us on Facebook. Just look up Finley. You can find us on all social media platforms, TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, etc. under at I am Finley. 
And be sure to subscribe to Small Business Stories, which you can find on any streaming platform so you never have to miss an episode. Until next time, see you all next week.